Good morning. Can you believe it? 2020 is almost over. Christmas is almost here. Ready or not, Thursday will be the night to meet our Lord as he comes to us as a child and to pray that we may continue in 2021 to meet him again and again as he comes to us in so many ways and so many times. So we have four days left during the season of Advent that we can continue to prepare ourselves to be ready for what God is going to do in this year to come. This morning, we've heard two really amazing stories that talk about what it means to be prepared for God who will appear. They're different stories, for sure, about different people, one being about King David and the other being about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And yet, they're similar Maybe in a way you haven't thought of yet. This week I realized they're similar in the way that God interacts with each of them and their stories. So let's take a minute to talk about David first. His story may or may not need a little more explaining, so I'll start with some background. As the reading begins, the year is around 995 B.C., And you see, David's always been a really ambitious guy with really big plans. And by now, many of those plans have been accomplished. He's just been crowned king over all of Israel. And in the years leading up to that, he had conquered Jerusalem and made it his capital city. Unified the various political factions in the nation around himself as leader and won enough battles against the current bad guys to make his new kingdom both militarily as well as politically secure. He's also built this brand new palace for himself that we hear about in our reading. And he is very comfortably established, if you will. Now David figures It's time that he should do something nice for God. (laughs) In fact, David has really big plans for God. He's going to build God a house, a temple that's almost, but not quite, but almost as big as his own palace, a temple that will gain as much glory and renown for the king who built it as it will for the God that it's being built for and dedicated to. You see, David has a lot of plans, and God does have a place in those plans, in David's mind and in his heart. But again, the verses that we just heard are God's response to David's plan. I know in seminary we used to talk about, if you ever want to hear God chuckle, just tell God your plans. But what's that I noticed in this story in this particular faction is that God actually says no as I was preparing this this week. God says that God will not be a part of David's plans. What? (laughs) But God does say that there is an alternative. David can be a part of God's plans. David will not build God a house. No, instead God is going to do something for David. God will create from David a house, a dynasty, if you will, through which salvation will come to all people. David's plans, and even his plans for God, really were centered on David himself. However, God's plans are for all of creation, and they include David So what we should give David credit for is not his grand plan to give God a pretty cathedral. What is to David's credit is his willingness to listen, to let God be God, and to surrender his own plans in the long run. 
David's victory is his ability to walk away from the future that he's outlined for himself and walk into the future that God has in store. And that, my friends, is so much harder. Then, almost exactly a thousand years later, Mary, who's in a familiar, similar, sorry, similar, although much less prestigious and much less public situation. She is a young woman from a respectable family who has made a good marriage. She was to be the wife of a skilled craftsman, which would make her a part of the tiny middle class of Palestine. Her hopes and her plans, I imagine, included a quiet life, children, good health, some economic security, and some comfort as well. Now God almost certainly had a place in her plans. There's no doubt that she would keep the commandments, make the sacrifices that were called of her, follow the rules, pay the tithes, the usual stuff. But in this story of the Annunciation is, among other things, God in many ways saying no to Mary's plans. God is saying that Mary will have a very little of what she hoped for and expected. God's saying that instead of Mary's plans for herself and for God, that God has plans for Mary. And these plans are different so very different than anything she could have imagined. They're definitely scandalous for her time, and they change everything for her and for her family. Through her, the dynasty begun with David would reach its actualization, and salvation will be offered to all people. And the key to Mary's greatness, I believe, is a central reason why she stands as first among the saints and why we hear in the Magnificat in Luke's gospel, from henceforth all generations will call her blessed. It's her ability to listen. It's her ability to say yes, to hear the voice of God, and then to say, let it be to me according to your word. The key to Mary's greatness is her choice to walk away from the future she had outlined for herself and into the unknown future that God offered her. And that is hard. That has always been hard. There is no doubt that we have had many plans ourselves for this year of 2020. We had plans for birthdays. We had plans for summer vacation. We had plans for Thanksgiving. We were holding out hope for plans around Christmas, plans for our families and for our lives. And I imagine, as I have come to know you great people of faith, that these plans included God as well. There's no doubt that so many of these plans, unfortunately, have been turned upside down, either from the pandemic or from our own personal tragedies or situations. And yet, as we come to a close of this Advent season, I pray, I pray for each and every one of us that we realize the way and reflect upon the ways that God has been with us all along and still has a plan. I believe we need to remember that very often it's been these times in our lives when things did not go as we had planned that God was the most present and the most real in my experience. One of the things that we offer, my sisters and brothers, is that we give up at our baptismal font and at this altar. 
we give up the absolute authority of our own plans. We promise to listen and to let God say no when God knows best. We promise to say yes. We promise to say yes. Now for those of you that may be rumbling a little bit in your head or heart about some of the things I've said so far, don't misunderstand me. I understand that plans for the future and for our lives and for the direction of our lives are very important. We are created with free will after all. We're created freely to be responsible people. We are to use that freedom carefully. Part of doing that is making plans and making decisions and following through with them. There isn't anything wrong with plans. There was nothing wrong with David's plan or with Mary's plans. The important thing I believe in this season and in on this fourth Sunday of Advent as Christmas is coming very near is that we see that God tells us that God's business quite often is very different from what we may consider business as usual. And the story of David and the story of Mary can, has, and hopefully will continue in one form or another to remind us of this. So again, in closing, as Christmas gets, close, gets closer, the last Advent, the last word that Advent has for us, I believe, this year is openness. For there is no doubt that one of the hardest tasks we face in life is to be open and to accept what God has in store for us, even if it's not exactly what we planned. And that task can also be maybe hard, but it can also be the richest and the most rewarding. So in my usual form, I end up with some extra questions and not as many answers, so I leave you with a few to discern. What will Christmas be like for us this year? What will it mean? What will it look like for the Lord to be born and for him to be reborn within us? What will it be like for us to face the reality that God has kept God's promises and come to this world and to each one of us. We may not know all the answers just yet, just as David and Mary didn't know. We can't always exactly plan for every contingency. But what we can do is open ourselves and seek both the grace to hear and to respond and the faith to persevere. Amen.